Right now, day two of the shutdown and a compromise, very elusive at the moment. The question is, how long is this thing going to last? Well, tonight we will hear from Congressman Gregory Meeks from New York. He says Republicans hold the country hostage. We're going to ask him to explain what the end game might look like. And later, a horrific chain of events ends in the paralyzation of a motorist and a man beaten, um, taken out of the front seat of his car. But the question is, not only who's really at fault here, but also what should justice look like in this particular case? Good evening, everybody, and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French, and thank you so much for joining us this Wednesday evening, October 2nd. Now, the president, he asked congressional leaders to sit down together at the White House, signaling there could be room for negotiations. Stress the word could. Let's uh, bring in our senior political correspondent, Andrew Whitman, who tells us the very latest, and, and we have a, a live pictures from outside of the White House, so if there is any breakthrough, not that we're holding our breath, we could hear some news tonight. Yeah, right now it's just a picture of a podium, Rich, but that meeting began about 15 minutes ago, and we are awaiting any developments. Senate Democrats standing firm that they will not accept any small piecemeal funding measures that House Republicans are continually trying to pass, and the impact of this federal government shutdown already being felt across the nation. Day two and still no end in sight. President Obama asked congressional leaders to sit down with him this evening at the White House, but there are no indications that anyone's changing their tune. House Republicans were making another attempt to pass individual funding measures, money to reopen the national parks and monuments, fund the District of Columbia, and provide veterans benefits. But the White House said it will veto them. It's the whole government back up and running, they say, or nothing. What right did they have to pick and choose what part of government's going to be funded? Nearly 800,000 federal workers across the country are furloughed. I build and develop the models that predict storm surge from events like Sandy, and yet I'm not able to do my job. 1,500 workers at the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard in Maine were sent home from work yesterday. No work, no pay. We have some that, uh, you know, breaking down uh, because, uh, you know, they're worried about paying their bills. 4,000 workers were furloughed at two military facilities in suburban Detroit. Brian Ward's wife was one of them. It's going to be a short shutdown. We'll feel it in the wallet. And programs that rely on federal funds are also at risk. The National Head Start Association estimates that nearly 19,000 low-income children either have lost or are at risk of losing education and nutrition services in 11 states because of the shutdown. More moderate Republicans have come out to say that Speaker John Boehner needs to let the House vote on a spending bill that does not include any changes to Obamacare. That bill, they say, would likely pass and end the shutdown. But for now, Boehner is not putting that option on the floor. Rich? Well, thank you very much, Andrew. For more, we're very pleased to be joined by Congressman Gregory Meets, Democrat from New York. Congressman, thanks for a few minutes. I know it's been a busy and a frustrating day. Very frustrating, uh, and I think very unfortunate that, uh, you know, the whole, the American public, 800,000 people furloughed today, not receiving their paycheck simply because of politics, and I like to actually say politics, uh, that's being uh, forced on them by the Republican majority in the House. It's not, uh, it's not a good thing. Well, the House Republicans today, um, they started a different tack, which is, hey, you know, we're going to fund certain things, like we're going to fund the opening of the parks. Uh, why isn't that a good idea? Look, they didn't piecemeal shutting it down. They shut the whole thing down. Let's, <laughs> the whole government down. Let's open up the whole government. Why do we pick winners and losers? Why do you try to divide the country? Each and every one of our federal employees are important. Each and every one should be brought back to work. Each and every one has... Uh, their own uh, financial responsibilities, their uh, mortgage or rent to be paid, their food bills, their uh, automobiles to be paid. Uh, we should not pick and choose winners. Uh, we need to bring them all back. Every one of them needs to get back to work. What they're doing is just holding the American people hostage. You know, I have a Social Security building right opposite my uh, office in New York, my, my district office, uh, and to see the individuals who are going there for help and no one is there to help them, uh, that's just un-American. You know, I heard a few of your colleagues um, appearing on the Fair and Balanced Network who said, hey, you know what, mail's getting delivered. Uh, I don't see any real consequences of the shutdown for me. Um, talk about that for a second. Are the consequences real enough that the public's going to feel them and see them 
uh, or this is going to be like the sequester a little bit where you got to look closely to see where this is uh, where the pain is being spread around. Uh, it is having a distinct and immediate effect on our economy. Uh, people right now in Washington, D.C. is losing millions of dollars every day that uh, the government is shut down. Uh, the economy is losing 200 to, you know, a close, I think the last time I looked at $20 billion a day uh, because of lack of acti activity. Uh, so there's direct effects that people are feeling right now. Uh, and will it continue and, and, and expand? Probably so if we don't get something done. But there's individuals today that are feeling the effects of the shutdown. And we're even hearing uh, stories about kids with cancer who can't get access to treatments here and, uh, and protocols being shut down. This goes across the board. Um, part, I, I heard a lot of people who said they feel bad for John Boehner because he's stuck between a rock and a hard place with the Tea Party wing of the party and other members um, who don't want to speak up because they're afraid of getting primaried. But then I'm hearing other people said, I don't feel any sympathy for the speaker because he could have put a stop to this and made it be an up or down vote where everybody voted to their conscience. Where do you fall down? Uh, how much discretion does the speaker really have in reality? Forget about what they say in the editorial pages. You're there every day. Could he really shut this thing down and still keep his job? John Boehner, for the sake of the American people, should put this vote, a clean CR vote, on the floor of the House, and he can do that right now. There's no question about it. Does, you know, he have a problem with his caucus overall, etc.? He does. But still, for the sake of the country, we've taken an oath of office. I don't think that John Boehner on his own would be as radical as the Tea Parties are. However, if he does not stand up at this point, you know, you, you had some leeway and I gave him leeway until the government shut down to try to see what he could do to massage and to get uh, his members, uh, especially those who are the extreme right wing, to get them under control. But what he's done thus far, and what seems to be clear, he's really ceding his speakership to Ted Cruz. Last thing, you're known as a guy who can count votes. Um, this has been self-inflicted stupidity. Uh, I think you and I would agree on that. When does this thing get resolved? If I was dealing with rational thinking individuals that maybe I could give you a prediction. <laughs> but since we're dealing with some individuals who uh, from their own statements have said uh, that they've come here to shut government down, that they basically uh, have come here not to compromise, that they've come here to say it's my way or the highway and that's all, you know, you're dealing with individuals who I think are not quite stable. Uh, and so how can you predict unstable individuals? Uh, I would hope that those that uh, have some stability will talk to them and or override them. How long that would take? I don't know. I think that the American people are the only ones that will make this end sooner rather than later. Knock on wood, this thing's over soon. Congressman Meeks, uh, good luck here and try not to pull out uh, what's left of your hair. That's right. And you can see there's not much. In fact, all you see that I was up there is gray, but I tell everyone I dyed gray to make me look older. <laughs> and it looks good. Congressman Meeks, thanks again. <laughs>